So today we're going to focus on and, and see how Big ID finds, classifies, and catalogs Office 365 data and how to protect and manage data across Office 365 environments. So as many of you know, Office 365 is a subscription service that provides users with productivity applications necessary essentially to get work done. And for many companies, Office 365 is the de facto standard for productivity software. Um, some of the productivity apps that are included, things like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Publisher. And all of these applications, they create data, uh, specifically unstructured data. Um, and most of that data finds itself its way into some of the other um, elements of Office 365, uh, things like Outlook Online as in the form of uh, email attachments, OneNote for Business, SharePoint Online and document libraries, and Microsoft Teams when uh, documents get shared among, among different teams. So um, from a, um, a collaboration perspective, we've seen uh, in a lot of organization, the usage of, of solutions like Office 365 really increase because things like remote work, which used to be, you know, for some companies one to two times a week, now it's a, a full-time uh, full thing uh, due to, to things that are happening obviously with, with COVID. Um, so adoption of cloud-based solutions like Office, Office 365 have really ramped up and the, the volume of data that's being uh, put into SharePoint Online and uh, Office 365 as a whole has really grown. And along with that, obviously come some challenges for organizations. Obviously the sheer volume of data that's being put into um, these different Office 365 elements. Um, you know, it's very difficult to tell what data is critical, what data is sensitive, uh, where, the, uh, where the personal data lives, you know, per data that's been collected on individuals. It's finding its way into all these different uh, Office 365 repositories. And in a lot of cases, it's, it's very siloed by, uh, by either uh, business unit um, or uh, you know, other, other, um, other silos. Um, and it's, it's hard to tell what data is vulnerable, um, you know, what data is overexposed. Uh, so these are some of the challenges that organizations are facing with Office 365. And the way that Big ID can help is really using its, uh, first and foremost, its foundational element of discovery in depth, which is, you know, before you can do anything with the data, before anything else really become, really comes the discovery of the data, understanding, getting a deep understanding of the data, uh, being able to go out and use what we call the four C's um, to uh, do things with the data, such as uh, catalog the data, uh, creating a centralized inventory, or information about all the data that lives within uh, your Office 365 environment so that you can understand where that sensitive data, where that personal data uh, lives across the, the, the entire Office 365 ecosystem. Um, the, other, the other thing to mention too is that we've, we provide that in context with everything else that you have out there. So insight into Office 365, obviously extremely valuable, but most organizations are running some sort of hybrid approach where they do have Office 365, but they also have other things like maybe databases, um, other on-premise elements, other cloud solutions. Um, so being able to show you that in that single catalog along with, you know, obviously Office 365, but all, along with all the other data repositories that you have is really valuable. Um, so that's catalog, classify. So being able to classify the data, again, tell you where you have sensitive information using things like pattern matching, um, so regular expressions. So using those in conjunction with some really some more sophisticated mechanisms for finding data, like natural language processing and other deep learning techniques to um, use what we, what we consider to be multiple methodologies to find more data and to find it more accurately. And then cluster analysis. So making uh, or putting some structure around unstructured data with cluster analysis and grouping together data that's alike. Um, cluster analysis allows us to do this so that we can find areas where we have our most sensitive or our most personal information or where we have uh, redundant or duplicate data. 
And then finally here, correlation. So being able to correlate data back to an entity, uh, like a, an entity could be a person as an example. So being able to tell you across all of our Office 365 ecosystem where we have data on Sean Owens, um, you know, this social security number, this hair color, this eye color, uh, this favorite uh, ice cream flavor information belongs to Sean Owens. So an entity can be in person, but it can be something else as well. So it could be insurance forms or medical claims. It's anything we want to tie data back to essentially. So again, uh, data discovery is at the core of what we do. And it's really the, uh, the, the beginning state or the beginning point for anything else you wanna do with the data. And our applications are something that we layer on top of our discovery in depth. And those, obviously those give the, you the ability to use the insights that you've garnered from that discovery to begin to go ahead and take action. So whether it's using our privacy apps to run things like a data subject access request or one of our protection apps to see where you have uh, overexposed data, you know, there's, there's uh, open access, uh, global group has access to it. Or using our, uh, our retention app to determine, you know, when you wanna archive or when you wanna delete data. So all of these applications sit on top of the big ID uh, discovery in depth platform, and they allow us to take different actions. So very, uh, very important. Um, and then from a, from an overall Office 365 uh, perspective, Big ID really helps with the discovery of the data, the classification of the information, the cataloging, so bringing it into that centralized inventory, and showing it to you in context with everything else that you have. Uh, within your environment, you know, especially if it's if it's hybrid, which it is in most cases, or in many cases, um, doing file analysis and providing insights and giving you intelligence on that data that you have stored in Office 365, um, and visibility and context, like I mentioned, you know, Office 365 showing you what data you have there, but also, you know, what how it how it relates to the other data that you have in other repositories. Um, being able to uh, apply things like policies. So when something is not as it should be with the data, so there's open access uh, or there's stale data or there's data on EU citizens uh, outside of an EU country. Policies allow you to uh, trigger a workflow when something isn't as it should be. Um, or apply labels. Um, so we can apply um, tags and labels within Big ID, but we can also tie that into uh, Microsoft Information Protection or Azure Information Protection. Um, and then some of the apps, we'll talk about those. Um, I mentioned the DSAR and the Access Intelligence, um, but there's others like the, uh, the Retention and the Quality app. We'll touch on a few of those today. We won't go um, obviously into everything because of limited time, um, but we'll cover what we, what we can. So for those that are not familiar with Big ID, so this is the Big ID dashboard. This is essentially the starting point or where you'll be taken when you first log into Big ID, just to kind of set the stage. Um, so within Big ID, you connect, we connect data sources to Big ID and I've connected 16 of those. So these are Office 365, but there are also other types as well. Um, some SQL, some SMB, Windows file shares. Um, some Oracle databases, some Snowflake, some Kafka, Data Motion. Um, so they're all represented here within the data sources that I've connected. We found objects out there. So objects can be uh, things like Word documents or PowerPoint presentations or Excel spreadsheets. Um, if we're talking about that unstructured or semi-structured data that lives in Office 365. Or it can be an entry in a table if we're talking about a SQL or an Oracle database. Attributes are things like email addresses or social security numbers um, or hair color or eye color, something that we found within the data that we care about really. Um, and then policies, I'll talk about those in a bit. Um, and then monitored entities. So an entity, as I mentioned before, when we were talking about the four C's with correlation is being able to correlate data, the attributes, the findings back to an entity or, or something like a, a person as an example. Um, and we have about 160 people that we have within this environment that we're able to correlate data back to. Um, so with that, I'm gonna cover just some specific areas of the platform in the interest of time. 
Um, the first thing I want to cover is, you know, connecting a, a data source, an Office 365 data source in particular. So if I go to, you know, I'll, I'll just type in the, some, something that begins with Office 365. Um, so you can see here, we, we really cover the gamut of, of all the different Office 365 elements, whether it's OneDrive, it's Outlook Online, uh, SharePoint Online. Um, we have it all covered. Um, we have uh, deep integration with, with Microsoft. We use only fully approved Microsoft APIs uh, when we're connecting to these data sources. And by the way, all of our data source connection, connections are API based. There's no agents or anything like that when we're making a data source connection. So what we do um, when we connect out to a data source is we make that connection um, by selecting that data source. And then we tell it a little bit about uh, where the data lives. We give it some credentials, um, client secret information in the case of OneDrive for Business. Um, we can narrow down the areas that we wanna search within. We can turn on classifiers. So we'll, I'll show you that in a, in a, in a minute. Um, and we can do some other things with the data. Um, and then once we've gone out and actually discovered that data via what we call a, a scan or a scan profile, so we connect that data source. The next thing we do is we go out and we configure a scan profile and we tell it what sort of scan type we want to do. In most cases, it'll, most cases it'll be a data source scan, but we can do some other things as well. When we're talking about large data sources, we can use something called hyperscan. And hyperscan is really an advanced machine learning technique to reduce the time of a scan by about 70 to 80% when we're dealing with unstructured data sources. Um, and this is a big deal because some data sources um, that are in petabyte scale, you know, would, would have taken years to, 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 uh, to scan previously. Uh, we're reducing that greatly so that, you know, the, the impo what was previously impossible now becomes possible. Um, and the way that we do it is we take uh, samples of the metadata and the content and we build that into a predictive model. And then we use that to assign probability that we put into a catalog so that we can say where the sensitive data lives. Then we can go ahead and create more targeted scans to look more closely at those areas. Um, so hyperscan is really a, really a huge deal and it's something that's proprietary to, to Big ID. And it is applicable obviously to Office 365 environments. Um, and just going back here, um, the, the four C's are, are represented here within the, within the platform. You can see them here. I'm gonna highlight some of these. Um, the first one I'm gonna dive into um, is classification. So Big ID goes out and it does that discovery of data. Um, and it uh, also classifies content as it's doing the discovery. And we use, um, we use pattern matching in some cases. And this, if you're familiar with any sort of data classification, you've probably seen this in other solutions. Um, it's sort of a, a rudimentary form of doing data classification where we're looking for specific patterns, in this case, social security numbers. Um, the bad thing apart of, about it, though, is that it can be prone to false positives. So what we do is we use this con in conjunction with other classification methods like document classifiers, where we can actually train Big ID to look for specific document types. And we tie into neural networks to do that. Um, so we have some out of box document classifiers. We can also uh, train big ID on new document classifiers. So if you have say a, a specific financial document in your environment, we can train big ID and it can learn about that. 